Um, well, it has uh, like a, a, a big uh, influence on the game industry uh, because there, there are a lot of differences between physically based trading and non-physically based trading. So here's another uh, definition. So I would say that physically based trading are the shading techniques providing better representation of interactions between light and matter. Now, uh, okay, we are talking about set of rules, so let me uh, enumerate them. The first one, uh, we have to work in linear color space, which means that we uh, shouldn't use the um, uh, uh, values of the colors that are encoded in, in pixels that, that are in uh, sRGB color space. We have to convert them to linear color space, which means that the values will uh, then represent the real intensities of, of, of light. But we, in Blender, we don't have to worry about it because Blender does it for us. And th the second rule, the rule of energy conservation, this is a pretty simple one. It's uh, like uh, no object that, does, that doesn't emit its own light can be brighter than the light that uh, hits it. So in Blender, when we are creating uh, our materials, we, are, we, we don't have materials like uh, wood, uh, copper, uh, I don't know, uh, plastic, whatever. We have to build the shaders from, from individual behaviors so we combine behaviors, like in this case we are combining the diffuse behavior with glossy behavior, and we somehow had to add those influences together. I said add because we add light, and we have the little node that is called add shader, but we shouldn't use it because this way we could have the situation where the object is brighter than the light that hits it, so we should use the mix shader and uh, simply into the factor uh, socket we, we put the reflectivity, something that we define. Into the bottom uh, shader we put the glossy shader, so this way uh, we know what the reflectivity will be. Uh, for example, when it's set to 20%, this material will be 20% glossy, 80% uh, diffuse, so everything will work just fine. Uh, now, another rule is that uh, we have to uh, uh, know that reflectivity is dependent on the viewing angle, so somehow we have to, uh, we, we have to model this somehow. So, well, this you, you can see on, on, on the pictures, like, like, like here, when we are looking almost uh, dead on, uh, we see through the water and back there, uh, it, it acts like, like a mirror, and of course it applies not only to water, but to almost everything, uh, even even copper has uh, some uh, reflectivity. Oh, here it is not copper, but you can see on the desk how reflectivity increases when the uh, viewing angle increases, and here as well. So, to uh, manage this, uh, we have to use some 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 formula, some some equation, and there is an equation that is called Fresnel, and Fresnel is just a mathematical formula that. Uh, calculates how what is the probab probability of reflection uh, on a given viewing angle, and it is uh, also dependent on so-called IOR index of refraction. And just very simplified definition of index of refraction is just the. Sp this is wrong, but uh, anyway, let me uh, uh, say that that it is true. Uh, so it is uh, the speed of light in the medium in comparison to speed of light uh, in the vacuum. So in vacuum, light uh, travels at the speed 300,000 kilometers per second. So uh, if uh, I am uh, characterizing this medium, it has an index of refraction 1.45. Uh, so uh, I should divide the speed of light uh, by this number, and I will have the speed of light in this medium. OK, this uh, doesn't matter. Um, but uh, well, we have. Uh, this, this is the graph of the, of the Fresnel for a different uh, media. We can see that um, we always have um, something uh, when the uh, viewing angle is zero degrees, we have some reflectivity, sometimes lower, sometimes higher. When the angle is 90 degrees, no matter what the medium is, uh, the reflectivity is always one and it's there are graphs, so you can see how it, how it goes. Some media uh, have different uh, Fresnel lines for, uh, reflectivity lines for, for uh, red, green, and blue uh, channels. And uh, the other important thing uh, that we uh, have to take care of is the approach to roughness. First, let me uh, tell you what the roughness is. Those are the small bumps. 
So in general, roughness shouldn't be treated as the shading property, but it should be rather treated as, it is in fact the geometrical property. We are not talking about how light interacts with matter, but, but we are talking about uh, what is the shape. Sorry, let me have a drink. <laughs> So this is geometrical property, but we are talking about uh, the bumps on a microscopic level, something that cannot be modeled uh, through mesh. It, it even cannot be modeled uh, through normal maps or bump maps. Uh, and uh, we are talking about so small bumps that we cannot see them. When we touch the object, we cannot feel them, but they are large enough to have great influence on how light uh, uh, behaves. So of course we are, so, so we treat roughness as the shading property and we of course don't model this, but we treat it statistically. How many micro facets will uh, point uh, to certain di directions. And here is how I uh, tend sometimes to, to handle uh, roughness in, in Blender because there is a relation. If the roughness is higher, generally reflectivity is a little bit lower. So here is the function. And I didn't write any function, mathematical function, but just use the RGB curves and just set the curve like this. Is it correct? Well, I don't know. It works. I can change it if I want to. I have the great control over it. So as you can see, the reflectivity is defined by the Fresnel that is multiplied by this factor uh, that is dependent on the roughness. This is one solution, maybe not the best solution. There are many other. Okay, so this light, how, do, how does light um, uh, behave? Is the light, okay, I maybe want to tell you what the light is. Light is light. Light is traveling and it hits the surface of the object. What may happen to it? The first thing that may happen, it may get, get reflected. The second thing that may happen, it may get refracted. I can say that it is probable that this will happen or this will happen, or I, I can say it's a little bit differently. I can say light will get split into two directions, reflections, uh, reflection and refraction. Here are the angles. So this is something very familiar, I, I think, to, 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 to everybody. The angle of refract, re reflection is the same as the incidence angle, but we have uh, something weird uh, going on with the refraction. Uh, it, the light turns. So I don't know how to explain why is it happening. F mainly because I don't know. Uh, secondly, it probably would be difficult. So let me use a little analo analogy. I, I like analogies uh, because you know they don't explain anything, but they put something into another context. We can observe something that we understand and think, ah, okay, so maybe light, uh, behaves uh, the same, so let's imagine a little tank, okay? So we have a tank and how a tank moves, uh, the engines uh, are putting forces onto both uh, trucks, so uh, here's our tank from, from the top and uh, it is, uh, for example, traveling on the road or, or on, on some, some, uh, uh, some surface that has a very good traction. So uh, equal uh, force is uh, put uh, onto, onto both of the, of the trucks and then this tank enters the mud, and as you can see, the left track of it uh, enters it uh, as the first, so it loses traction. Uh, so it it, it uh, encounters uh, resistance, uh, so, so now equal force is put for on both uh, of the tracks, but this one, the left one, slows down, so what happens when it slows down? The tank turns. Then the second truck enters the mud. Now uh, they have uh, equal uh, resistance, so it will continue going on a, on, a, on a straight line, right? Okay, so this is just an analogy. We can also look at it uh, a little bit differently. We have air, we have glass, we have point A and point B, and what is the fastest uh, route from A to B? Well, somebody may say the straight line between A and B, uh, and, a and B. this is not the fastest route. This is the shortest route. But if we simply draw a line between A and B, the light would be 
to spend too much time in glass where it moves slower. So if the light takes this, uh, this path, it will move from A to B the fastest. So, okay. Now, reflection, refraction, some of the light gets reflected, the rest of it um, breaks the surface and goes into the object. What, what happens to, to this portion of light? The first thing that happens is absorption, so simply some of the light or all of it uh, just disappears, vanishes. Well, technically nothing can simply vanish. The energy of light is, is uh, converted to heat, but for us uh, it, it doesn't matter, so we say, okay, it, it vanishes. Um, this vanishing, this uh, absorption may be selective, so some color gets uh, get, uh, absorbed, uh, some uh, don't. So when blue light got, gets uh, absorbed, we, we, have, uh, we have the yellow appearance of, of, the, of the object, and the rest, uh, the rest uh, um, uh, of the light uh, gets uh, scattered. And, and of course, we, we can have a different amount of this scattering, and this is scattering, so uh, we see that the light goes into the object and begins to somehow bounce off the particles inside of it, um, so-called scattering particles, and so those of atoms, molecules, group of molecules, groups of molecules, whatever. So there is some interaction, and when the scattering is strong enough, uh, it prevents the light to, from going through the object, but it will, the light will escape pretty close to the entry point, and it will escape in various directions. Um, at this uh, this thing is so chaotic that when we sum uh, all of those behaviors, we have a very, very even uh, distribution uh, of light. So, okay, we have reflection, absorption, scattering, uh, so let's translate it into, 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 into the shader. Uh, so reflectivity, I talked about reflectivity, uh, so it's governed by this function that I put into the factor, and I simply use the uh, glossy, glossy shader. Um, and this gives me the uh, reflectivity. Now, what about the rest of, 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 of the stuff, so scattering and absor absorptions? Uh, here we can see um, different uh, objects and we have uh, growing scattering uh, to the right, growing absorption uh, to, to top. Um, and now uh, we model this uh, by putting some shader or some mixture of the shaders into the first socket of, of, of our uh, mix shader. So for example, we want to create this one, so the water or, or glass. We can put the refra refraction node with a white color here, uh, and, and, and we have it. Of course, someone can say, well, we have the glass node, don't we? So we can simply use this. Yes, we can but uh, I simply wanted to show you a different way. Here we have uh, maybe a little bit better control, uh, maybe change some behaviors a little bit easier. In the glass shader, we don't have so many sliders, so we all love sliders. Now, let's create this one, so it's uh, also zero scattering, but some absorptions, so again, refraction, but this time I gave it a color. Um, here, this one, I would say that maybe it's translucent, this one, maybe this is a subsurface scattering, something like that. Now, okay, let's create a snooker ball. So this is, this is diffuse. So this is how we do it. So we have several nodes that simply uh, govern exactly the same physical uh, phenomenon, scattering uh, with, uh, with uh, absorption. But there are many of them. So why don't we have just, just the one node with two sliders scattering uh, absorption? Well. In some cases, uh, it, there is no use to calculate several things. When we have the material that is diffuse, that acts uh, like a diffuse, uh, we don't need index of refraction. We don't need many other, other things. So uh, we simply choose those, uh, those uh, shaders, um, having in mind uh, how uh, intensive uh, it is to compute. So for example, let's say uh, we have to choose between diffuse and subsurface scattering. How do we choose between the two? Uh, let's uh, once again take a look at the physical behavior of the light and the scattering. So uh, we see that the light enters the uh, object, scatters, and then exit, and we have some distances, various distances, between the entry exit point. And let's imagine that we have, uh, we are really, really, uh, zoomed in right now, and this circle that is drawn here represents the 
area that we sample, something really, really tiny, smaller than the pixel. And if it happens so that those uh, outgoing lights, uh, the distances between entry exit points are pretty close, uh, clo uh, are shorter than the, 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 the radius of, of, of the circle, then we should simply use diffuse. So uh, we simply say that those distances are zero and everything becomes pretty simple. In other case, here uh, this uh, sampled area is small compared to the distances. So in this case, we should use the subsurface scattering. How do we decide normally when we are build, building shaders? We see that it depends, some, it is relative. It depends on the distances. So when we are close to something, sometimes even if we uh, normally wouldn't use subsurface scattering like in plastic, uh, we should use it because some of this behavior uh, should be visible. And on the other hand, normally when you are uh, creating skin, well, subsurface scattering, we should use it. But when the person is very, very far away, those relative distances are just uh, so small that it's no use. You can freely simply model this using a diffuse shader. Okay, for now, what is this? Uh, Again, the graph of the Fresnel, we have reflectivity and angle of incidence. Now, generally Fresnel is a mathematical function. As you can see, um, it's pretty simple. Okay, it's, it's, it's not that simple but because I, I didn't want to throw uh, at you uh, any complicated uh, uh, equation at the start. Um, it's half of the sum of the reflectance uh, of the light as polarized, polarized and of the light P polarized. <coughs> what does it mean? Uh, doesn't matter. We have R RS and we have RP. Okay, so those are RS and RP, so those are monsters. Just imagine, it's even for the computer, it's, it's, it's like impossible to compute. Uh, okay, so th that's why for ages, um, many render engines was using some simplified versions of it. Something that is called Schlick's uh, approximation. And this is the equation much simpler. And what is important here, we don't have, let me go back. Here, all of the letters N, for example, N1, is the index of refraction of the medium that we are uh, coming from, and two is the index of refraction of the medium that we are coming in. So those are indices of, of re refraction. Um, it's, it's not that easy to author the, the, the material when we are using those uh, scientific values. We would rather want to control it by colors, by some, some simple sliders that behave uh, as we expect. So here, as you can see, R0. R0 is the reflectivity when we look at the object dead on. Zero uh, degrees angle. And this is, of course, uh, the combination of N1, N2, and so on. But we, in the, main, uh, in the main equation, we simply use this reflectivity at zero degrees. So we can, we can say, okay, 4% reflectivity. And the rest of it will be uh, governed by, by the, uh, by the uh, equation. Here, what I wanted to show you is, uh, th this is the approximation. So Schlick's approximation doesn't give you the correct results. The correct results, the proper results, are those uh, lines and dotted lines uh, is the Schlick approximation, so we see differences. And we can say that it's okay. Those differences are so small that we can ignore them. Maybe when, when we look up, uh, uh, up there on this, uh, this thing that, uh, that represents aluminium, we see that this difference is, uh, may uh, seem huge, but all this is happening uh, in the range of, of angles between, I don't know, 70 to 90 uh, degrees. So pretty, pretty uh, small uh, area, so uh, we can somehow live with this. What is used in Blender? Well, Blender, in Blender, we decided not to go the easy way, so this monster is used. Uh, so it's okay, we should be happy, because, uh, well, we are using proper Fresnel. Now, and it is 
fine, really fine, when we are operating um, uh, in the ranges of uh, index of refraction from, I don't know, 1.1 to 2 or 3. So this is the reflectance 1.2, 1.45, 1.6, 2.5. It's fantastic. But uh, we can, uh, and this is good that we can find those uh, real uh, world uh, data. We can find uh, indices of refraction uh, somewhere. This is, in my opinion, the best source uh, for, uh, to, to find the real world values. Uh, so let's, for example, here we are going into trouble a little bit. Uh, let's, for example, check uh, the silver. Silver, and we see we have refractive index, 0 0.15 something. Well, I said at the beginning that index of refraction is the speed of light in relation to speed of light in vacuum. And we know there was a guy, Einstein, yeah? we know that there is no speed greater than speed of light in vacuum, and this would mean that in silver, light travels faster. Impossible. So, technically speaking, index of refraction is not the speed of light in the medium, but it's so-called phase velocity. What is phase velocity? I have absolutely no idea, but it is something different. What, what has been proven is that no information can travel faster than the speed of light in vacuum. But when we are talking about phase velocity, the only thing that I know about it is that, well, it doesn't carry information. That's why it can move faster. But let me not go too much into it. But fine, we found the index of refraction for silver. So we know what to use in our shader. So, whoa. And it's a complete disaster. So now, what can we do? How do we cope with, with such situations? This is, this is crazy. This simply doesn't fit. Well. What we can do, we can, for example, set this index of refraction to something ridiculous. So we will have reflectivity that somehow resembles reflectivity of silver, maybe, but it's completely wrong. Uh, why? Because, well, we must know that index of refraction in nature, <laughs> let's say, it's uh, not just this... Uh, this thing, this N thing. But unfortunately, index of refraction whew, is a complex number. So uh, what is a complex number? Uh, so this is the complex number. So we have this N plus K times I. It doesn't look very scary. Uh, so we have N, we have K. So what is I? Generally, we don't have to know this. But anyway, I will tell you. So this is something like this. I squared gives us minus one. Huh? Crazy. This is why the complex number, we have the real part and imaginary part. This is imaginary number. Mathematicians are aliens. If they don't have some solutions to something, they figure out, okay, so let's, let's uh, create a new number. <laughs> All right, so this is a number, and it solves, it solves some problems. Uh, anyway. Even though the index of refraction uh, is the complex number, we can derive reflectivity uh, that will be the real number. But in Blender, we don't have Fresnel node that has n and k uh, things. So there is one solution, not the easy one. We can use uh, OSL. And here you can see we have the template, and the template that is called Fresnel conductive. I will tell you that this, uh, this doesn't work uh, very well. Uh, I made my own version of it because it's not uh, uh, precise. It has some errors. Uh, but okay, let's say that it doesn't, so we can, we can, we can use this. So this is how the script looks like. So uh, in order to be able to use open shading language, uh, we have to enable it and then add the script notes to choose uh, our script. and. Here we have N and K, and th those uh, look as if they were colors, but we don't care. Those are just three values, okay? So into the N, we simply put the, the values for red, green, and blue channel of N, and here we put something, we put the K values that we read from, from 
uh, from the sources from uh, refractive in the index dot uh, info uh, yeah so we may for example make gold and we may make gold that is really really physically correct so for example, 18 karat gold. What does it mean? 18 karat, so it's 75% of gold, and uh, silver rest, silver and copper in, in the same uh, proportions. But there's a problem. I, I want to really be, really be physically correct. I want to do everything exactly as it should be done. Those percentages are measured um, as, as a mass, okay? But I am more interested, interested, interested in the volume. Right, so, well, um, I checked uh, what is the mass uh, of gold, of silver, of copper, and so on, and, and, and somehow I translated those uh, things uh, the, into the volumes. Uh, I uh, checked uh, all of the values, all of the indices of refraction for copper, for silver, for gold, uh, for each of the channels R, G, B, and, and, and then combine them together and I was really, really happy uh, because I created a pretty awesome shader. This is a real gold. Wow. <laughs> and it looks like this. It's real gold now. Uh, let's say that uh, I don't like this color very much, so where do I change it? I don't know. So, what I wanted to show you here was uh, don't overdo this. Physically based shading is okay, but don't overdo this. Uh, here is uh, a comparison, okay? We have Golden Suzanne and second Golden Suzanne. And believe it or not, one of them uses this crazy material that I showed you, and the other one uses this. So, this, or this. Sorry? <laughs> well, so, uh, well, just uh, let me just sum up. Uh, physically based shading is just a set of rules, and the most important thing is to properly handle uh, reflectivity. Base it on the viewing angle, use Fresnel uh, always, um, treat uh, roughness properly, and don't overthink it, think it don't overdo this, uh, give yourself uh, the room for artistic uh, input. So that would be all, thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm open to questions. If there are any. Well, first of all, I appreciate very well that you showed all formulas and scary us with some imaginary numbers. I like it very much. It was awesome. But I would like to ask you what about temperature? Do you have some solutions for that? Well, we don't see temperature, we see colors, right? So, well, of course, well, we have the nodes that uh, like uh, converts to, to like black body node or, or, or something like that. Yeah, is that right? So, well, but I don't use it. So uh, I have a question. So um, Fresnel is basically about reflectivity and refraction. Why do we use it as a f uh, to, to calculate um, the, the amount of uh, reflection based on the angle, since the reflected angle is always equal to the incident angle? That's why I don't, what I don't understand. It's, it's confusing to me. Uh, it's dependent on the viewing angle. So. When you are looking dead on, you have less lef reflectivity. When you look like this, you have more reflectivity. So, I don't know. This is how world works. I don't know. <laughs> it's just it, it. It just is so. 
the surface is more reflective at the grazing angle and less reflective when we look that on. Is that right? Or Oh, thank you. If you uh, look at, uh, at an object, um, every object will have tiny pores and holes in real life. And if you look at it straight on, then the pores and holes will uh, basically be, be um, responsible for some sort of roughness because you know there's just a tiny bit of scattering where there should be in an optimum mirror, if you've turned the glossiness to 100%, uh, the, rough, the roughness to 0%, there's a perfect reflection, but that doesn't exist. So usually what happens is that you have these tiny pores and, pores and holes, and if the viewing angle uh, is very flat, those will be kind of squished together. Uh, the distance, uh, d the, the subjective distance of the pores and holes will be smaller. So they will form a more, um, a more um, less rough surface, a more glossy surface, because you can't really uh, make out the difference anymore. You probably should make a drawing or something, but uh, you no, it's sorry. You have black and white dots, if you imagine them, you look at them straight on, you can see black and white dots, but if you, if you decrease the angle and you look at them like this, they will, yeah, they will form a gray. So that smooths it out, and that's why it's ref more reflective or less rough at the edges, at a grazing angle. That's the small thing I wanted to note. Um, you had shown the OSL version of the shader, of the metal shader that has the metallic Fresnel. And uh, Lucas is at the moment uh, has a working patch to get exactly this node into cycle, so you you won't need to do this crazy setup anymore because we'll get a we'll get a directly a node for it for metals. That's great news. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>